In this video, we'll create a transparent HTML login form using Bootstrap 4. So let's take a look at it before we get started. At the top of our form, we have this transparent user image sticking out of the top of our login form. Then for our first input section, we have a email input. And if we don't put a proper email in here, we're going to get a pop up. And as you might notice, off to the left of our input sections, we have uh, the at icon and the lock icon and then underneath the inputs we have our login button and the forgot password link. So in the description of this video will be a free download for the starter files to this tutorial. So I'm going to be opening up index.html and style.css with the free program called sublime text and then I'm also going to have index.html open with Google Chrome while we're developing the login form. Also included are the images for the tutorial, including the face image as well as the mountain background. Let's take a look at what's already included for us in the starter files here in Sublime Text. So in style.css, we already have our font family laid out for us as well as the mountain background image. And then in index.html, from the top of the file, we have our uh, title, transparent HTML login form, followed by Bootstrap 4 with Bootstrap uh, CSS, then the latest version of jQuery and the latest version of popper.js, which is uh, recommended for Bootstrap, followed by uh, Bootstrap 4.js. Then we have font awesome uh, CSS. So that's going to allow us to add these icons off to the left of our input sections for the login form. Then beneath that, of course, we have a link to style.css, which we'll get to in the later portion of the tutorial. OK, so let's go ahead and get started with our first tag for our form. So we're going to wrap this with a div class modal dash dialogue and then we'll also say text dash center because our text is going to be centered here and bootstrap will take care of that so modal if you're unfamiliar with it it's a uh, basically a class that's going to display on top of anything that may be behind it so we don't need any z index and it's going to sit right on top of our background image at full width, the login form is going to take up two thirds of the page and then we flex it down. Once we get to 576 pixels, it's going to turn into full width. So 576 pixels, you might know, is the small screen for bootstrap. So we're going to use div class call dash SM for small dash nine which is, as I said, about two thirds of the screen, nine out of 12 columns. And then we'll use the uh, class main section so we can identify it later in the CSS. Okay, so now we'll actually add our modal content class and we'll start to see uh, the shape of the form develop. So div class modal content, and then I'm gonna leave some space here in between the div. So now if we go and refresh, we should see, should see the start of our form up at the top which we do. Okay, so let's get started with our user image up at the top. So this is going to take up 100% of the modal content width. So we'll say div class call dash 12 for all 12 columns and then user image as our class so we can reference it in the CSS. So inside of that, we'll just add our image. So that's image source img forward slash for the image folder and then face dot png. OK, so now if we go and refresh in Google Chrome, we should see our face image there, which is displaying a bit larger than the original, but we'll size it down in the CSS. So now let's start off the uh, actual form. So let's wrap it with another div class call 12. So div class call 12, and then we'll also use a class called form dash input. And then we can close off the div and inside of this, we'll have a regular form tag to start off our form. OK, so inside of the form, let's add our first input section here for the email, which will be wrapped with a div class that we're going to call form dash group. OK, and then we can close off the div. And inside of that, we'll have our input. So input type email and then class form dash control. 
And then for our placeholder text, I'm just going to keep it the same as the original with enter email. Okay, so now if we refresh, there we have our enter email input. And now we can add the enter password input. So this is basically the same starting with the div class form group. So if you want, you can copy and paste it. And all we need to change is the email text to password for our type and for the placeholder text. Next, let's drop down to our login button. So we'll drop down underneath the div class form group and start off with a button tag. And we'll say button type submit and then class btn btn dash success and then we'll just say login in between our button tag and this is going to give us the sort of default green bootstrap button with btn dash success next let's add the forgot password text so let's drop down underneath our uh, form input div and we'll say div class call dash 12 and then we'll just use a class called forgot Okay, then inside of that, we'll just add a link here. I'm just going to leave it blank with the hashtag for now, and then we'll just say forgot password question mark. Okay, so let's go over to Google Chrome, and there we have our forgot password text. Okay, so that's everything for our HTML. Now we can move over to style.css and get started with styling our form. And we're going to start with uh, the main section class. So here's the main section class just under the modal dialog. So dot main section and let's center our form on the page and move it over a bit. So we'll say margin zero auto to center it and let's add some space to the top. So margin top 130 pixels okay and then also let's take away the inherent padding inside of it to make a, a little bit of padding off to the sides of the uh, input sections okay so next let's go ahead and drop down to the main or sorry modal content class underneath it so dot modal dash content and we'll apply the background color which is the hex value 434 e5a okay and then let's add the opacity to make it transparent so you can mess around with the tr opacity to um, the effect you want with the transparency I'm gonna use opacity 0.8 to match the original okay and then let's also apply some padding to the left and right with 18 pixels on the left right zero top bottom and now we have the input sections uh, a little inward from that without padding. And then let's apply a, a, a border radius that's going to make it a little more rounded on our corners. Okay, so that looks pretty good. All right, so let's move on to our user image. So I want to reference that with the user image class here. And then we'll reference the actual image. So user dash image and then IMG. And let's resize it so it's uh, got a height and width of 120 pixels. Okay, so that looks like it's about the appropriate size here. So now let's pull it upward a little bit so it's hanging outside of our form with margin top negative 60 pixels okay so that looks good and then let's add some margin to the bottom of it so margin bottom 45 pixels and if you haven't noticed I have the uh, the screen zoomed a little bit on the version that we're working on so it's not going to match up to the original perfectly unless I make it the original size which now it does okay so let's move down the page and move on to our form group sections next so we we'll want to space out the input sections and the login button a little bit so we'll go ahead and reference the form group class here so dot 
form-group, and then let's apply a margin to the bottom of it of 25 pixels. Okay, so there we go. So now we'll want to adjust the, uh, the input sections and make them a little bigger, and we'll change the text. So we'll do form-group, and then we'll reference the input tag. So let's change the height first, making it a little bit larger with height 42 pixels. I think the original is about 35 or 38. Okay, and then let's change the border radius to border radius 5 pixels to make it a little more rounded. And let's take away the border, which is inherent, with border 0. So that looks pretty good. So next, let's change the, um, the text. So we'll want to make it a little bit larger, and then we'll space it out. So font size 18 pixels from 16 pixels, and then we'll say letter spacing 2 pixels. So that looks good. And now to make room for our icon, we'll say padding left 54 pixels. Okay, good. All right, so now we can go ahead and add our icons from Font Awesome. So we'll we'll reach them by saying form group colon colon before, and then we'll want to use the Font Awesome font family. So that's Font Awesome backslash five because it's version five and it's the free version. So we'll say free, and then content. Uni we'll use a Unicode here, so content in quotes backslash F1 FA for the at symbol. So if you want to get a, a Unicode for it, you can just do a Google search for font awesome icons, and on the page for each icon will be the Unicode symbol, so you can use different uh, Unicodes to create your icons. So let's use position absolute to get it inside of the actual input section and change the font size to 22 pixels. Okay, so that looks good. Now let's pull it off to the left. So we'll say left 28 pixels from the very left of our uh, main section, and then padding top 4 pixels to center it. So that looks pretty good, and then we'll just change the color. So color, hex value, 55E60. Okay, so that looks good. And now let's go ahead and just change the, uh, the second at symbol to the lock. So we'll want to reference form group, and we'll, we'll call to the last form group class. So we'll say last of type colon colon before. And then the only thing that we need to change is the content style. And we'll use the Unicode F023 for the lock icon with font awesome. So there we have it. Okay, so let's move on to our login button next. So we'll want to reference the uh, form input button. So form input and then button. Okay, and let's change the width to 40% to make it a good bit wider. And then let's change the, the spacing around it. So we'll say margin 5 pix pixels on the top, 0 left right, and then 25 pixels on the bottom. OK, so that looks good. And now let's apply some styles to the actual button. So we'll want to reference the button class here with bootstrap btn-success. So dot btn-success. And then let's change the background color to that blue shade with 1c62. 8, 8 as our hex value. Okay, so that looks good. And then let's change the font size to 19 pixels and add the border radius of 5 pixels to match our input sections. And then let's make it a little bigger with some padding. So padding 7 pixels top bottom and 14 pixels left right. And then let's change the border to make it a um, sort of an off-white blue color, the same as the clouds in the background or the sky in the background. So that's hex value DAF1FF. 
and we'll use that same hex value for the forgot password link. Okay, so it looks good except for we want to change the hover color. So we'll say btn dash success colon hover and we'll change the background color to hex value 13445E, which is a darker blue of a similar shade. Okay, and then we'll just need to change the, um, the border to the same one pixel solid DAF1FF. Okay, so that looks good. Then lastly, all we need to change is the forgot password section. So I want to reference the, um, the class that we gave that, that section, which is simply forgot. So dot forgot, and we'll add the same padding that we gave our button. So padding five pixels top, zero left right, and 25 pixels bottom. Okay, that looks good. And then let's just change the color of the link. So we'll say forgot a color DAF1FF. Okay, so let's go ahead and refresh. And there we have our link color changed to the, the background color of the sky. Okay, so we have a fully functioning, transparent HTML login form using Bootstrap 4. And that does it for the tutorial. I want to thank you for sticking around with me. Please remember to like this video, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Then I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.